Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Anthony here. All right. Uh, we got a good fight coming up within... Uh, it ain't going to happen in 2015, but uh, it's likely we might see it in 2016, maybe towards the end. Uh, it, it, it depends on beat or beef, though. But Kovalev versus... Sergey Kovalev versus Arthur Beaterbeev, or Beaterbeev, however you want to say it. I just call him Beaterbeev. Um, <clears throat> they're going back and forth right now, big time. You know, they have been kind of throwing little jabs back and forth, but uh, now they're, you know, putting statements out to the public or to the press, whatever. Uh, you know, Arthur Beaterbeev got a fight coming up against uh, Gabriel Campillo. Which that's gonna be a good fight, um, you know. Or uh, Beater B, he's seven and zero with seven KOs. Um, you know, he 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 has fought some good fighters. Um, he, you know, I, I am impressed with his uh, you know fast movement of his career. But when them guys, them oh my God, the guys that are coming out from that, you know, like the Eastern European block, them Russian guys and stuff. Uh, they all have so much amateur experience, you know. Even like like a little like a Lomachenko, Kovalev, Golovkin, Beater Beef, uh, all these guys can, you know, they move fast. You don't you don't have to you know pamper them and maneuver them just right. Uh, they do get maneuvered. Don't get me wrong, but you know, they don't have. They're they're ready. You know, they're ready. You know. Uh, Beater Beef needs some more fights, though. He does. Um, he's a, he is a, a, a blue chip prospect. Don't get me wrong, but he's not at that championship level just yet. And I mean, they his camp knows that. Everyone knows that. You know, he needs some more fights. Uh, period. But you know. Um, as, uh, this is an article, you know, it says, Beater Beef threw down some fighting words when he declared that he would beat Kovalev again. All right, now, uh, listen, you got to hear Kovalev's side of it, though. Uh, Beater Beef says he beat Kovalev twice in the amateurs and plans to make it a trilogy of wins when they meet in the pros. Now, Kovalev already knew this fight was going to happen in the pros. He mentioned it in the Bernard Hopkins lead-up. He was talking about it then. Uh, this is a fight that, you know, they know is going to be made eventually if Beater Beef can continue his rise. And I think he will, and I think he can. Um... <clears throat> Beater Beef says, I'll put on a good show on uh, and fight April 4th when I step in the ring. Uh, he says, I, I don't have a friend. I want to continue to get better until I face Sergey Kovalev again, and I will beat him again. Uh, on April 4th, he fights uh, Gabriel Campillo, and, you know, that's going to be uh, a good fight. That's really going to let us know where um, Beater Beef is at. Uh, but Kovalev now has responded to his countryman. Kovalev's words were, It's interesting that he says he beat me at something. When it's a... When he says, no. What is it? A dream of something? Uh, he said, we met, we met twice in the amateurs. He don't deny that they have fought. All right. Uh, he, we met twice in the amateurs. Where in the first two rounds, Beater Beef's head was touching his ass. And then in the third and fourth rounds, when I was tired, he could not do anything with me. All of his punches struck air as if he was doing shadow boxing. The entire Russian team will confirm what happened in Kislovodsky. Kislovodsky. Uh, amateur tournament. You know, uh, Kovalev was on the Russian team then, and ba he's saying he basically I got robbed uh, against Beater Beef in the first fight, um, which is very possible because that all, all everything over there is you know po politics. Uh, and then he continues. He says, "In the in the second time we met, 
was in the Russian Championships, and the judges gave him the victory because I had no support behind me, and I was fighting on my own against an entire corrupt commission in Magnitogorsky. So there is no need to mislead people, Arthur. First, earn a fight with me, and then I will punish you. And no more wishful thinking. As of today, you even refuse to fight Chalemba. And that shows how scared you are. Actually, he says, and that shows that you are scared. You know, uh, he was supposed to fight Chalemba, what, two weeks ago when Chalemba fought that other dude from Ukraine who did not want to be in that damn ring. Uh, he, he wanted out so bad, but... Uh, his father wouldn't pull him out. He just kept throwing him in the ring to get punched in the fucking face by Chalemba. Uh, that was supposed to be Beater Beef in, in that ring. Uh, but he pulled out of the fight. Now, why did he pull out of the fight? You know, we don't have those questions answered. Um, it does seem as though his people all of a sudden, uh, might have caught a glimpse of, you know, Chalemba in training. And, uh, was like, you know... He's looking a little too good. Uh, we're not ready for this. And pulled him the fuck out. Because uh, he did get pulled out. And we don't have an answer on why. You know, uh, He didn't say he was hurt. He did nothing. Just, I'm not fighting the guy. So that kind of does say uh, he's admitted he wasn't even ready for Chalemba. Just like Cove said. Uh, Beater Beeb's manager, Anna Riva, uh, talked some shit too. Uh, which is, which is funny, which is real funny, because, listen to this, um, <laughs> I would, I would like to say that boxing is not a street fight. Being a boxer, not just ha being a boxer is not just about waving your fists. In boxing, there must be ethics and respect. Sergey, well, he is very ugly in the way he acts and not professional. I think Kovalev is fucking extremely professional and ugly in the way he acts. How? Because he responded to Beater Beef talking some shit? Like, come on, man. Uh, they, man, Kovalev should have fucking punched Pascal in the face when Pascal ripped his fucking hat off. He's lucky he just got pushed. You know, he's, I think Kovalev's very professional. Uh, you should be a champion who makes a good example for the younger generation. So you shouldn't come out like that and be so cheap. Real men don't talk. They decide everything regarding their hurt feelings in the ring. Well, tell her client to take the same advice. You know what I'm saying? Kovalev ain't the f didn't come out first. Kovalev was being quiet. And Beater Beef ran his fucking mouth. So she's saying be real men don't talk. Uh, I agree with her and all that, you know. But if a man is talking first and against you, you are going to defend yourself. Uh, whether it's with these or with your words, you know. So, I mean, come on, man. Real men don't talk. Tell her fucking client to shut his fucking mouth in. I mean, God, if she's saying Kovlev ain't a real man, then what the fuck is Beater Beef? You know? And I'm not saying either of them ain't real men, because they're both real fucking men. Uh, but th that's just the stupidest statement to say when her the, the her client talked first. You know, um, man, and she goes, uh, did you forget for how many years you have been running? And Arthur in a year is already on a high pro level, so hold your envy in silence. Pretty harsh, huh? Um... I don't think Kovalev is envious at all. He's the fucking champion, the real champion of the light heavyweight division. Um, I don't think he's envious of anybody. I think Beater Beef is envious of him. And that's why he opened his mouth and talked some shit about how he beat him. You know, uh, if he really wanted to fight him, he should have gotten a fucking ring that night on his undercard and beat the dog shit out of Chalemba, and then maybe that would have created a buzz for that fight, and people might have wanted to see it. But since he didn't fight fucking Chalemba, no one wants to see it in, in the general public. I, the hardcores, want to see that fight like 
crazy, right? But uh, we're going to have to wait. You know, Beater Beef had his perfect chance to get on a fucking HBO card, you know, on a highly, highly viewed card, too. Um, and, you know, do some damage. And then, you know, the buzz might have been there for that fight, right? If he would have came in and beat the shit out of Chalemba, he could have, you know, called out Kovalev. And then right there, people are like, oh, we got someone for him. We got someone for him. Uh, but he didn't. So, he, you know, Kovalev's going to fight Mohamedy. He's going to beat the shit out of Mohamedy. And then hopefully Pascal fights him. Uh, I look at it this way. The WBC is so sick of even the... Even the WBC is sick of Stevenson, all right? They know that uh, Adonis Stevenson is ducking Kovalev so hard, uh, whether it's Heyman causing the ducking or it's Stevenson causing the ducking. Either way, he's ducking, okay? Um, and I say either way because if Heyman was doing it, you know, all he has to do is say, well, I'm fighting him anyway. You know, take me to court then, bro. What, what's the big deal? You know, a Heyman fighter, just because Heyman can order the fighters, that don't mean they can't still go and fight. You know, like if, uh, say Heyman advised Adonis not to fight Kovalev, he can still go fight Kovalev. Uh, all, all, I mean, I, I've told you this before. I've talked to a manager slash advisor. He does both, uh, manages pro fighters and advises pro fighters. Uh, he, he looked at the contract, everything. All, all they have to do is fight anyway. Worst can they still have to give him their 15% or whatever the percentage is that he would get. Uh, he, they still have to pay him that. And if Heyman wants, he can take him to court for damages. Uh, but he said rarely, rarely does, uh, any advisor or manager get damages because um, they just look at it as a fighter like well you got your 15 percent that's it case closed so that's what i mean either way he can go and fucking fight kovalev uh so he's ducking him so the, the, so the wbc is even so sick of their champion not fighting the guy who is the man that they gave kovalev a diamond bill the wbc diamond bill which is technically even better than the belt Adonis has. So they're really like, all right, Kovalev, uh, you're our new champion. He can have that strap still, but you're our champion. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is unifying the division. Because you can't unify the division if this dude over here that has the other belt just refuses to fight you. Uh, he's going to have to get stripped eventually or get in the damn ring. And hopefully after Mohamedy, Kovalev versus Mohamedy that's coming up, uh, you know, then Stevenson will fight him. Uh, but he might not, you know, and then he'll get stripped. And I don't know, he'll, he'll have to fight him. It's either fight him or retire because he'll be a joke if he don't. He's already pretty much a joke. His value is nothing. His value is nothing. Uh, it's bad. Like, his value plummeted. So, you know, it'll probably be Mohammedy, then hopefully Stevenson, and he can get the real WBC belt. Uh, then he'll probably fight another, you know, the, another mandatory from one of the other belts, because he's going to have all of them then. Uh, there's some other, I, th I think it's the WBO, uh, once, uh, a mandatory fight with Kovalev for their guy. Um, <clears throat> Cause they were pretty mad at the WBC for giving him that diamond belt. But Kovalev beat or beef. You know, that is gonna be a hell of a fight. Uh two guys, you know, they 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 ran together when they were younger. They fought uh, each other when they were younger. They both came up in the pros. Kovalev became the man. Uh beat or beef is still working his way up. Can he, you know, stay undefeated uh, long enough to get in the ring with Kovalev? I don't know. Uh, I think he can. I think he can, uh, depending on how many fights he has. Um, it looks like he's taking training more seriously, Beater Beef, because he used to be, you know, not all cut up. Uh, then all of a sudden, I mean, watch his first few pro fights. He's not cut. 
Uh, he's strong, but not shredded. You watch his new fights, he's shredded. Um, so it's like, uh, you know, he's definitely taking training more seriously. Uh, so he should put on better performances and work his way up to Kovalev. And then hopefully, you know, he can do that and we will see that fight. Because that fight is going to have real hate behind it. You know, that's going to be a real fight. Um... I can already tell you right now, though, I'd, I'd imagine Kovalev winning. Uh, you know, he's just going to have way more pro experience. He's getting better with every fight. I think he could beat him right now, of course. Um, you know, obviously, Peter B will have more experience, too. But I just think Kovalev can do a lot more than Peter B. Uh, he's a more versatile fighter. Um... You know, but we're going to have to wait and see. You know, I hope we do get to see that fight. So I hope uh, Beater Beef can work his way up. It'd be a good one. Um, so, yeah, man, let's just pray that we get that fight. You know, Beater Beef should not have fucking pulled out of that fight. I don't care if he's fighting Campillo or not. I uh, should have fought Chalembo right then and there, then called out Kovalev, then went and took on uh, Campillo. You know, if he could have got past Chalembo. But Chalembo was in good form, in good shape for that fight. So it would have been a good one. I think they were a little scared. I do. I think they were scared that that was going to be a too, too tough of a fight for him. Uh, which says a lot. You know, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But it looks that way. It really does. Um, yeah, man. Let me know what uh, you think of the fight. Who you think would win. If they fought. And. When they would fight, do you think Beater B is going to be able to work his way up through the rankings? Whatever. You know, let me know what's up. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Stay safe till next time and peace.